everybody, Mrs. Bodoshan here. Today we're going to be talking about how to predict products with solubility rules. So first up, what are the solubility rules? Here they are all listed out for you. Most teachers are going to have you memorize these. Some of them will let you use them on a test, but either way you have to know what they are so that you can use them. So let's just kind of quickly look through them and make sure we have our guidelines in order. So first up, I've separated this with green, meaning that it is soluble or mostly soluble, and then red, meaning that it's insoluble or is not going to be dissolving. So let's start at the top with the things that are definitely soluble and will dissolve. So compounds containing alkali metal ions and ammonium. So any of those will definitely be dissolving and will be soluble. The next one, compounds containing nitrate ions, acetate, chlorate, and bicarbonate. Now the next one, um, it says mostly soluble. In other words, for the most part, they will be soluble and dissolve, but there's gonna be a few exceptions to these rules and the exceptions are where it kind of gets a little fuzzy, right? So compounds containing chloride ions, bromide ions, iodine ions are, are gonna be soluble with the exception um, of silver, mercury, and lead. So you just gonna have to memorize those are the exceptions to the rules and they will be insoluble. All right, the next one, um, these are going to be mostly soluble. So compounds containing sulfate ions are soluble except for those that have silver, calcium, strontium, barium, mercury, and lead. So again, just make note that the exceptions are not soluble, so they're insoluble. And then the bottom two, these will be insoluble or not dissolve. So compounds containing carbonate ions, phosphate, chromate, sulfide, or silicate. And there are exceptions with those containing the alkali metals and ammonium because that would clash with our rule number one, saying that those are soluble. And then the very last one that you need to be aware of um, for mostly insoluble are compounds containing hydroxide ions will not be soluble except for those um, that have alkali metals and barium. So alkali metals and barium will be soluble. Okay, now that we know our rules, let's go ahead and start using them. So which of the following are soluble in water? And this is kind of like an example test your quiz question. You'll be given a list and then you have, you know, some kind of um, like both A and B, both C and D, something along those lines, because it might be more than one, or it might say like click all that apply, something along those lines. So we're looking for ones that actually will dissolve, be soluble in water. So I've highlighted our rules that apply here. So the first one is lithium chloride, and you can see that lithium is an alkali metal and that is soluble. Um, and then mostly soluble is chloride ions, and that is also a chloride ion. So this one will be soluble. NaCl, that's a chloride ion, and Na is also alkali. So that one is also soluble. This one is silver chloride. So Chloride is yes, but we have an exception, and the exception is if it contains silver. So this one does. So this one will be insoluble. So our answer choice would be A and B. So answer choice D would be the correct one for this matter. All right, let's try another one. Which of the following is easily soluble in water? So if you don't have your rules memorized already, this one's gonna be really difficult. Um, but if we refer back to our rules, you can see that the ammonium compounds, that's gonna be in our rule one. The same thing with group one metals. Group one is alkali. So um, alkali metals are soluble from rule one. And then nitrates were rule two. So all of these are gonna be soluble. Okay, the solid silver chloride formed when solutions of um, AgNO3 and NaCl are mixed is called what? And this really doesn't have too much to do with solubility rules as in what number rule it is. This is just a generalized question of chemical reactions. So what is it called when it forms a solid? It's a precipitant. And that is what is gonna be um, important here in a second. You can see these say AQ, AQ, and that AQ stands for aqueous solution. But the S that you're gonna see is standing for the precipitant, the solid precipitant that it's formed. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. Which of these substances are soluble in water? Pause your video, look at your rules, see if you can figure this out, and we'll go over it together. All right, let's go ahead and go over it. 
I'm going to circle the ones that are soluble and let's look at the rules to figure out why. So the first one is BASO4. You can see that our sulfate ions are mostly soluble, but there are exceptions. One exception is barium, which means this one will not be soluble, will be insoluble. The next one, uh, copper chloride, our chlorides are going to be soluble. Uh, we do have exceptions, but none of the exceptions are copper. So therefore, this one will be soluble. Our um, next one is going to be silver chloride. If you look, chlorides are going to be soluble, but there are exceptions and silver is one of them. So this will not be soluble. And then we have copper sulfate and sulfates are soluble. There are exceptions to the rules, but copper is not one of them. Therefore, that one is going to be soluble as well. Okay, so now we get to the predicting products part, right? So we're given an example um, on a test or a quiz and we only have our reactants. We don't have our products. Well, if you guys remember back um, from when we learned about predicting products before, you're going to do outside, outside, inside, inside. If you don't remember that, I can link that down below for you and you guys can get like a full recap of that one, okay? Um, so we are going to match up our partners. So Na goes with the Cl and OH will go, go with the Mg and we will form our products. But you're going to have to make sure that you balance your chemical equation before you move forward, all right? So you can see that now we have coefficients there because it needs to be balanced. And we're going to use the solubility rules to determine the products and if they're soluble or insoluble. So I just kind of did this for you and I'm giving you the synopsis here so we can move forward. So group one cations, Na plus, and chlorides are soluble from rule one and rule three. So NaCl will be soluble in water. However, rule six states that hydroxides are insoluble and thus the MgOH2 will form a precipitant. And remember, precipitants are gonna be classified as the S inside the parentheses instead of that AQ, which we know is aqueous. So again, make sure you have that equation balanced. Once you balance it, now you can go back and add your parentheses. We know that the NaCl will be soluble and dissolving, so it's gonna get an aqueous solution. And then we know the MgOH2 is going to form a precipitant. It's gonna form a solid, and we need to indicate that in our equation. Okay, so our next move is to now separate them all out into their ionic forms as if they were dissociating in the aqueous solution. So you can see I've done it already for us. Let me kind of talk you through how I did this. We had two NaOH. So what I did was I separated them with a plus sign and I used the coefficient for each. So because I know that Na will break apart from the OH, I went ahead and put the two in front of the Na and the two in front of the OH because we don't want to lose our quantity, okay? Um, and then you need to add your electrical charges. Remember, you can get electrical charges just by looking at the periodic table. Um, if you don't remember how to do that, I can link a video below of how to find electrical charges. And polyatomics, you can always look up a chart if you don't have it memorized of the electrical charges for your polyatomics. So you can see we did this with each one. It was MgCl, and we went ahead and we separated that out. Make sure you put the charges, and I am writing if it's aqueous or not, um, just like we did before, okay? So just continue that on. Notice when I got to MgOH2, this one is not gonna separate because this one is insoluble. It will form a precipitant or a solid, right? Which means that um, it's not gonna dissociate, therefore I'm not gonna break it apart into ions because that will not be happening in real life. We're gonna leave it together. Um, but I will go ahead and break down NaCl because that will dissociate, it is soluble. So the very next thing you do is you need to cancel out um, if you have a duplicate on either side of your equation. So we're gonna go through this. So if I have a 2Na on my product side, I do, 2Na plus, I can go ahead and I can cancel that out. And I'm gonna do that for all of them. You can see 2OH negative, I do not have a 2H negative, so it stays. Mg2 uh, plus, I do not have an Mg2 plus, so it stays. The 2Cl negative, I have a 2Cl negative, so they both get canceled out. I do not have on this side an MgOH2, uh, so that one stays. So now what we do is we consolidate. 
we take everything that's left and we put it into a chemical equation um, by eliminating the spectator ions that were duplicates, all right? Um, so this is gonna be our final product. This is what we end up with for our chemical reaction. Let's go ahead and try another one. So here we start with our um, reactants. We need to find our products. So again, the very first thing you do is outside outside matches with inside inside. They both go together and you can see that here. We're kind of swapping partners. So the CO will go with the outside SO4 and that is a polyatomic. And then you will do the Cl2, we'll go with the Na2. You can drop the coefficients, ex I mean, not the coefficients, you can drop the subscripts except for the polyatomic subscripts, okay? Uh, we will balance the equation in just a bit. So um, make sure you use your solubility rules. Try to figure out which ones are insoluble and will form a precipitant and which ones are soluble and will dissociate, okay? So in this case, COSO4 is soluble because rule four states that sulfates, which it contains, are soluble. Similarly, we find that NaCl is soluble based on rules one and three. So in this case, they're both going to dissolve. They're both soluble. So we're gonna go ahead, balance our chemical equation, add that AQ for aqueous for both of them since they will both be dissolving and are both soluble. And we need to then cancel out any ions that repeat on both sides. So break them into ions first, as you can see I did here. Make sure to include their electrical charges from the periodic table and then cancel out a reactant and a product if they are identical, right? The spectator ions. Um, in this case, you can see I've canceled out every single one, okay? Every single one on both sides has been canceled out. I'm showing you this because they do like to trick you sometimes on a test or a quiz. If every single one is canceled out, there's nothing to, to cons like consolidate and bring down for a final chemical reaction um, equation. And that's because no reaction will occur. So this is just a big, no reaction will take place. This will not be happening in real life. Um, so I wanted to bring this one to your attention because they do like to trick you on a test. So if this is ever on your test, you guys, you need to look for the answer choice that says no reaction will take place, okay? I hope this was helpful in learning how to predict products. Check out my other videos for more science help, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.